sofa6.co.uk sponsors of the haze hour and it's wednesday night here at vapor trails towers and tonight i am over the moon to welcome a guest from overseas from france indeed it's uh, jacques le Uzek. have i pronounced that correctly jacques yeah that's pretty good um who is He's the head guy for the SRNT in Europe. What, we'll go into the full title when we've, uh, when we've been through the titles, if you like. I'll tell, we'll, you'll find out all about him and why I think he's a good guy to have on side. Also, as you'll notice, over my left shoulder, as ever was, it is the effervescent loveliness, the belligerent bubbliness that is the one and only Sav. Good evening, Sav. Good evening. And this is going to be VT Talk. And I've just realised I've got the Here's Our Titles up. Huh. That's going to be fun, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it just? I'll tell you what, let's do it without any titles, shall we? Why not? This is VT Talk. What a clown I am. I've loaded the wrong show. Never mind. Jacques, welcome, welcome, welcome indeed to uh, VT Talk here on VaporTrails.tv. Um, would you like to introduce yourself and tell everybody watching who you are, what you've done and what you're doing with the Society for Research in Nicotine and Tobacco in Europe. Well, thank you, David. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm actually uh, a scientist from training. I'm a neuro neuroscientist and uh, I've been working on, uh, on nicotine and tobacco dependence for about 30 years now. And uh, Talking about uh, SRNT Europe, the Society for Research on Nicotine and Tobacco, uh, I just want to mention that uh, I am currently uh, president of SRNT Europe, but I'm not talking uh, as the president of SRNT Europe tonight. Uh, I will just talk uh, for myself uh, because, uh, as you as you may know, I mean in in, in societies. You don't always get uh, the full consensus on, on, on some specific uh, topics like this. Indeed, yes. Uh, well, basically, I'm acting as uh, a consultant. Uh, I'm an independent worker, and uh, I've been involved in uh, in many uh, uh, associations and, and organizations in France and uh, mainly in Europe. But I've, I've, always, I've also been one of the charter member of uh, Society for Research on Nicotine and Tobacco, which was actually uh, founded in uh, 1994. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also uh, teaching here in France uh, and I'm, I'm actually uh, doing training for uh, smoking cessation specialists, uh, training them on, on pharmacology of nicotine and tobacco dependence. Okay, can I just dive in at that one? Because if, if you, you're working with people that are, that are working in, in the cessation field, but you as well know that when we start talking about nicotine cessation, it's not the same as smoking cessation. Yeah, right. Um, I've always been, you know, uh, on the harm reduction side. Uh, I, I have a feeling we'll never get rid of, of tobacco if we uh, just uh, live on, on smoking cessation. Uh, we know uh, there is a sort of hardcore group of smokers that will, will always have difficulty to convince to stop smoking. And they, 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 they might don't want it or they might not be able to do it. And we have to do something for them. Uh, if people do stop smoking uh, with or without treatment, it's fine. But we need to help those who can't. And those who can't could use um, less harmful products. And uh, in in uh, in a, I mean uh, a few years ago, I was also uh, advocating for snus, for example, mm -hmm. uh, 
and and I'm, I've always been advocating for telling the truth to smokers because we know that there are differences in, in different tobacco products and the, the most deadly one is the cigarette and is the, the, the one that is the most available and particularly for us in Europe where this is, is actually bad. Yes. So, so we need to, uh, to do something to make sure that uh, people who can't stop smoking uh, could actually reduce their, their harm from smoking. And since I know uh, uh, the e-cigarettes, I'm actually now much more in favor of e-cigarettes than uh, I am now uh, uh, in favor of snus. Uh, snus is, is much better than smoking, but I, I think e-cigarettes are, are much better than snus. Now, again, I'd, I'd love to dive in there. As somebody that's done the years and years of research that you have and knows these products inside out, I'd love to know why you think e-cigs are less harmful than snus. And we know that snus is 1% as harmful as smoking tobacco, but e-cigs are even less harm harmful than that, you say. And, and I would love to hear why. Well, for me, be just because uh, it's pure nicotine compared to a tobacco product. I mean, if snus is uh, a pretty good product and with low uh, carcinogens uh, content, uh, it's still a tobacco product. And there, there are still uh, substances in tobacco which are hum more harmful than pure nicotine. Um, now, we don't, we don't know exactly uh, what other components like uh, propylene glycol or, or VG or glycerine uh, or uh, aromas, etc., uh, would do in the long run, inhaling these products uh, chronically for, for years. Uh, but we can't know it uh, before <laughs> in advance. There, there's no way to, 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 to know that. Well, and, and for me, for me, the main product in this e-cig is nicotine, and that's what the smokers are looking for. So, indeed, you, you mentioned propylene glycol and uh, and glycerin, both of which are used in the entertainment industry to a very large degree in in haze machines and fog machines, um, and I know I've been quite active in the music scene for thirty years. Um, as, a, as a, a sound engineer, and quite often a monitor engineer where I'm sat right at the side of the stage. Yeah. And I've, I've had, on more nights than I care to remember, because I'm only 25, honest, uh, I've had a big, huge, great big smoke machine, we called them, or a haze machine behind me, pumping at least a litre of liquid into into his form into an aerosol form and i've been breathing that all night so you know switching to e-cigs was nothing to me it was actually pretty much like being back at work but with the added joys of nicotine and um, so it has has nobody in in um in tobacco and nicotine research ever thought of putting those two particular things together the fact that you know there are people that have been inhaling this for quite large quantities for quite a long length of time. I mean, does that have any scientific bearing on the whole thing? Well, it, it should be done. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, I guess probably uh, we may have the answer somewhere, but not, not in the tobacco field, not in the nicotine and tobacco research field, but probably somewhere else. We, we have maybe an answer on this. And that would be very interesting, actually, to, uh, you know, to, to bring other sciences from, from other fields uh, to help us. Yes, I, I, was gonna, I was just going to pose the question, how often, I mean, I've got to be careful how I phrase this, I suppose, but if I mention the name Stanton Glantz, I'm just going to look at your face now and see how it looks. W would, you <laughs> would, would you class him as a friend? Not really. Okay. 
Right. How often would somebody like Stanton Glance, for instance, then look outside the tobacco control community to try and find evidence, or would he not? Well, that's to 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 my point. That's that's the main problem. That's I, I think the the tobacco control community uh, fight for years to obtain a very good. Uh, instrument which is the WHO framework convention on tobacco control this this was a, a real good uh, achievement because it's I mean most of the of the countries in the world have uh, signed this uh, uh, agreement and there's plenty of very good thing in it but the problem to me for the last 10 years is that the tobacco control community seems to focus only on killing the tobacco industry yes and not taking care of smokers i've got, I've got that's, a... that's the difference between the tobacco control community uh, and particularly their journal called tobacco control and the Society for Research on Nicotine and Tobacco, which is much more open to science, and we have a, an, also our own journal, Nicotine and Tobacco Research, and these are really two, I mean, we talk to each other sometimes, but we don't see the, the, the landscape the same way. And I think in Society for Research on Nicotine and Tobacco, we are more interested in smokers and to trying to help them, and particu particularly uh, to develop uh, arm reduction uh, stuff. Indeed, indeed, yes. Now, I'm, I'm noticing that uh, Sav's got the look on her face that tells us that chat's been particularly active, so I'll throw it across to her and see what chat's been saying. Sav, it's over to you. There's been an awful lot of comments coming in from chat, which most of them I will say have been answered as we've gone along. But I've got one question, which I'll, I'll, well, I'll get to the question second. I've got a comment that came in from Kerry Henderson, and she says, cigarettes are only so depended upon because they are seen, promoted and used by a population with tobacco advertising embedded in them since birth and before, whereas e cigs are seen as new and unsafe and possibly dangerous. Regardless of the reams of research done on them disputing this fact, they all go back to the discredited FSA research with infinitesimal traces of TSNAs. Yes. And that was from Kerry. Okay. And the question that's come in was from Mr. Scotch Pie, and he wants to know um, how addictive Jacques thinks nicotine actually is, because he says, I'm nowhere near as addicted to an e-cig as I was to normal cigarettes, yet I vape a lower nicotine strength. That's, that's a very interesting question, because it's something I've been wondering about, because I've certainly yeah. discovered I, I, can, I never used to be able to go more than a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, without sparking a cigarette up. These days, I can be sitting clattering away into Skype or into uh, onto the Twitter or something like that, and then you suddenly realise an hour and a half's gone by and you haven't picked something up. I know there are a lot of people watching this will find that hard to believe, but truthfully, it does happen. It, it, so, what what's your take on that, Jack? It's amazing because I I was uh, just uh, chatting with with uh, vapors in France. Uh, just a, a few minutes ago on the on the on the French forum, and uh, there was a, a, a new post uh, today uh, exactly about this. So I tried to explain them that um, yes, um, pure nicotine uh, is not as addictive as tobacco smoking is. The the, the strongest dependence comes from the fact that you inhale tobacco smoke because nicotine in these conditions uh, enters the brain uh, by the fastest route that exists. Mm -hmm. Inhaling smoking through the lungs is faster than taking an IV uh, drug. And, and so uh, smoking is the most addictive 
addictive form of using nicotine. If you use an e-cigarette, we don't know yet exactly what is the speed at which nicotine enters the brain with an e-cigarette. It's, it's certainly s slower than with cigarettes. And that might explain why you don't feel as addicted uh, to e cig that than you, you were to cigarettes. But also because in cigarette smokes, you also have plenty of other substances uh, on which we don't know much, actually, because we only studied nicotine. And so we know there are some substances in the, the smoke of cigarettes that actually uh, have a synergistic uh, effect with nicotine. And so it probably increased the addictiveness of nicotine. And that's probably why using an e-cigarette uh, uh, is probably a bit less addictive. But I'm convinced that nicotine is, is still uh, an addictive drug. But it's much less addictive when it's used this way. Okay. Now, one of the uh, one of the things I've seen with a lot of the MEPs and the, the discussions that they've had, they bring up the word addiction and the, the kind of sneer when they say it. You know, that... that People are addicted to nicotine as if they were addicted to, I don't know, strangling three week old babies or something like being addicted to nicotine is a bad thing. But in, in terms of the addiction scale, where does nicotine addiction fall in, in just in terms of the harms that it can cause? And I'm, I'm thinking purely now in terms of an addiction outside of smoking lit tobacco. I mean, it, it, is it likely to cause, you know, debilitation or real serious health problems? Is it going to cause people to go and rob banks to get money to buy e-juice? How serious are we talking when we start talking about nicotine addiction? Or are we talking something that's about as bad as being addicted to, you know, five cups of coffee on the morning? Yeah, no. Addiction, first, first thing, addiction for me is not a bad word. Uh, and, I, and I think, I think, uh, as long as an addiction is, is not harmful, uh, or is as little harmful as it, as it can be, uh, I have no problem with that. Yes, I think in, the problem with sm tobacco smoking is the, the, the disease caused by tobacco smoking. Pure nicotine is pretty pretty much harmless. Nicotine is a, a fantastic drug. Uh, it's probably the the only drug that you with which you can do what you want. Remember when you were a smoker. Um, I don't know if it's the case with uh, with e-cigarettes because I'm not an e-cigarette user, but I used to smoke. Uh, but it, with, with a cigarette, you can get what you want. If you're tired, you can stimulate yourself. Or if you're uh, you're in a in front of your computer or your uh, uh, white page, and you have to write something uh, that will help you to to go through. Oh uh, yes. And if you are tired of your day, stressed, and and you you just come back from work. You will use the cigarettes in a different way, and you will be relaxed instead of being stimulated. And still, it's the same drug, but you use it, and you know how to use it different ways. It's, it's fascinating that you're saying that, because it's ringing all kinds of bells with me. Um, the, whole, the whole notion of coming back from a stressful situation, sitting down in a lazy boy, and in this case, picking up you know, something nice, and I'll be talking about this tomorrow night. Nice deep drag on some 45 milligram and just... Mm. And then at the same time, I well remember, um, it must be nearly 20 years longer, 25 years ago, I was editor of a national magazine uh, and also working freelance in a number of other mags. And I'd, I'd submitted a piece, but I'd submitted a piece five days after I'd stopped smoking. 
and the editor of the magazine that I was submitting to sent it back and I can't say exactly what he typed in the message but it basically went along the lines of what on earth is this it's rubbish do it again which raised the stress levels up through the roof first thing I did was to go up to the corner shop buy 60 Marlborough smoked six of them on the way home smoked the rest of the pack and then sat down to write the piece submitted it and it took half the time to write sent it in and he phoned me up and he said what's been the matter have you been ill have you been ill i'm worried i said no i was trying to pack in smoking but i'll not be doing that again and it uh -huh. just you, I, I know if i need to concentrate really hard if, if it's really stressful i'll pick one of these things up if i need to think on the fly i'll pick one of these things you, you'll be able to tell if i'm struggling to word a question to you tonight um i'll have a couple of deep draws before i switch back to me and then ask you the question it just helps the thought processes and you're so right in what you say um, and I think that's probably a good point to take the adverts and um, when we come back I want to talk to you about how people use e-cigs in France um, what what the uh, what the French law is and, and so on and so forth and then we can compare and contrast and see whether we can get our heads together and, and come up with a, a good plan here um, so we'll be back in two minutes um, when we'll be talking more with uh, Jacques Leuzek, who I think is, is destined to become one of my greatest friends because I love what I'm hearing so far. Be back in two minutes. Save the Six. Sponsors of the Haze Hour. And we are back in the room with uh, the effervescent loveliness that is Sav to my left. Her, the, the bubblicious babe, I believe. She's known in certain quarters. I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to ask where. And to my right, one of the most erudite men I have ever had the great pleasure of speaking with. And I've got to say how much a pleasure it is, Jacques. Jacques Luzek, who... Oh, even though he's not representing SRNT tonight, he's president thereof, and he is one of the very few people in tobacco control that I've spoken to that actually understands the science and understands the way everything's going. And and I, I I'm so thrilled by that. You've got you've got no idea. I really am. But let's let's move away from the science a little bit because I'm interested in in what's happening in France. Now, I know um, that the, uh, the forum that you're a part of put together a, a petition. And last time we spoke, you had something like 20,000 signatures on it. How is that doing now? No, it was 10,000 and it's, it's uh, over 13,000 now. Okay. Uh, but it's been all, online only for, uh, I think, five or six weeks. So it's been very, very uh, successful. Uh, on, on the main forum in France, we have about uh, 26,000 uh, people registered. So we, we hope to get more, more people uh, signing. 
And also we encourage people to sign the European uh, petitions as well. So, I mean, where, where are you, you know, exchanging also? Um, the forum is very active and it's, uh, it's really interesting and I, uh, I've been on it uh, for, for a couple of months now and it, it, it's really interesting and I, I think actually they, they, they like uh, my interventions when uh, I, I try to explain them science with, you know, with, with lay words uh, and it, it, it's really interesting to exchange with them and it, for me uh, it's it's a tremendous experience because that's the first time in history that smokers or ex-smokers talk to each other. Uh, we, we never saw that before, and, and that's that's fantastic because they help each other as well. Indeed, indeed. I, in fact, I've got to say, um, Jacques, like myself, was has been reading a, a, a quite execrable set of documents that came out from. Um, the Journal of Tobacco Control, and and in reading through all of those, and we'll we'll possibly chat about them during this segment. Uh, I came across a, a little point. I don't know whether you picked up on it, Jacques, where they were saying that there are forums, there are user clubs and user groups uh, of people that use e-cigs, and you don't get that with people that use nicotine gum or people that use patches. That we have. We have become organised, and it would appear that the we call them ants, A N T Z, anti nicotine and tobacco zealots, um, are quite scared by that because I think they've realised that we do pass good information around, and that forums welcome people like yourself, Jack, with open arms because you do know what you're talking about. So. Coming back to the, the French Forum and the, and the French Vapors, what, what, what would you say is the, um, the average kind of setup that they use? I mean, are they kind of hobbyists where we're talking about Genesis style atomizers or are they into egos or do they use, and I hesitate to hold one of these things up, looky like cigarette lookalikes? Or what, what's kind of the, the main go to e cig in France? Uh, I think. Uh, at least on, on the forum, uh, most are using uh, ego types or, or mods. Uh, and I've been actually surprised. I, I went uh, a couple of weeks ago to the SRNT conference in Boston, and I was surprised to see how much um, the cigarette type of e cigs are uh, very much uh, used in the US compared. To, I think in Europe, I know it's true for France. I, I'm pretty sure it's true also for for, for UK. Um, uh, we have much less, I think, of these e-cigs that uh, resemble, you know, classic cigarettes. Mm. And I think it's good actually. And um, we 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 actually are in France in a pretty good uh, situation. Uh, if there was not this uh, European uh, tobacco directive, which is, is, is really scary. But presently in France, um, we don't really have uh, a strong regulation, but um, the regulatory agency for medicines um, has uh, formulated uh, a sort of uh, uh, draft something about two years ago saying that uh, any liquids up to 20 milligrams per meal uh, and and e six that uh, doesn't pretend to be a, a smoking cessation device uh, you know and um, uh, having um, a maximum in one cartridge of 10 milligrams of nicotine uh, is actually considered right now as a consumer product. Oh, so that that's 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 the legal status of e-cigs in France. Yeah, it's it's sort of legal. It's not really uh, you know in the marble, but it's it's how it is. And the problem is because of this uh, EU tobacco directive. Now uh, the regulatory agency and the government wants to. to, to 
try to regulate uh, these things. So they asked actually uh, a group of experts to come with recommendations and they, they are working on it and uh, <coughs> I and, and, and about we were about 50 people that will be able to uh, uh, command these uh, recommendations. And hopefully, uh, and this will be done by the end of May, uh, and hopefully uh, we hope to have something that will not change too much uh, the situation. But we still uh, are pending on, on the decision of, of EU. Uh, but I, I don't know how, how this will be uh, uh, visible, but uh, with many people over Europe, we are trying not also to, to influence the MEPs uh, in, in Brussels and, and to, to make sure that the tobacco directive goes uh, in the right direction to, uh, to uh, allow the ESIG users to continue using their products. And, and probably, and, and that's something I wanted to, to say also, uh, because of these forums, because ESIG users are talking to each other Actually, there is a sort of a regulation, a self-regulation that's going on, because only the best product will stay on the market. Yes, and I think that's, I think that's really important as well. I think it's that's that seems to me to be pretty much the same um, as in the UK, as in Germany. In fact, Europe wide, the, the market has decided what is good, um, and the, the market has decided, as in. The users decide what they can and can't use and get away with. I mean, there, there are various different, um, what's the word I'm looking for, enclaves of, of, of ESIG users. There are some that like using what the Americans would call a stick battery, what we call a looky lakey. And I understand that. And as a proof of concept for somebody getting involved, that's fine as long as it's decent. I can well understand that the likes of the Ego, um, and what have you becomes the most popular because it's probably the most convenient um, or in my parlance Keith friendly I know that probably doesn't mean a lot to you but anybody that watches VT TV regularly will know that if it's Keith friendly everybody can use it that's just the way it is top pocket and all um, and then we've got you know the, the, the folks that are if you like a bit like me that like using the heavy uh, the heavy batteries, the, the, the technology, the, the Genesis style atomizers and so on and so forth. But I was interested to hear that, that a package or a, a cartomizer or a unit, if you like, of juice could have no more than 10 milligrams of nicotine. So how, how is juice, loose juice, sold in, in, in France or is it not? Well, it's actually uh, a, a bit loose uh, because you, you, you actually, I mean, the 10 milligram limit is only for a cartridge, a sealed cartridge. See, right. Uh, so if you have a, a, a tank, then you have a, you, you, you can have your e-liquid in. Uh, I mean, the, the bottles are probably around 10 mils maximum or something like this, and uh, and, and and they can refill it. Uh, so that's currently that's not a problem. Okay. Do, do you see that changing with what you'll be recommending or what your regulatory agency will be taking up? Um, I mean, across here, um, as, as many people, again, will know, um, this is a bottle of 45 milligram per milliliter juice, which is the uh, I'm under stress juice <laughs> and gets used quite, quite frequently. Um, I'm 36 in here and I very, very rarely go below that. Uh, so... Do you see that, that the French authorities will relax a little on the, on this 20 milligram or because I've, I've written down on here, you know, French MEPs, how do you think the French MEPs will actually vote? What do you think they'll take uh, to the European Parliament and the Envy Committee? Are, are they likely to be um, as strong as, for instance, Nicky Sinclair, whose video I'll be playing in in the third half, by the way. Um, but what, what, what's what's the situation with the French MEPs and, and, and their take on the whole thing? Well, I think we don't have a, a good uh, supporter right now. Uh, we hope to, uh, you know, to 
convince them, uh, but uh, I haven't I haven't seen any anyone taking a, a strong position right now uh, on this. So we still need to work on it. Uh, going back to your 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 question about the the, the content, um, I would be happy if if we can leave uh, the situation as it is with the, the maximum of 20 milligrams per milliliter. That will not, uh, you know, there will not be a problem for people to get higher, higher uh, concentration if they like from internet. All right. But, uh, but in shops, uh, that, that, would be, that would be the limit. And I think for, for most uh, vapors, I mean, the, the majority of them, I think that will be enough. Uh, actually, it's, it's my uh, impression uh, when talking about, uh, about this on the forums. Uh, but I know there are people like you that are using higher, higher dosages, but that this will always be available anyway through internet. So. Indeed, indeed. Um, and I can see eyeballs moving from left to right with Savas per normal. Uh, chat's been busy again, I have no doubt. What have they had to say? Chat have been talking about an awful lot of stuff. We've had a lot of um, conversation about the strength of the online communities, um, which obviously you didn't get with cigarettes or with other NRT. And that the self the communities are very self policing in the terms of quality of the things that they get and also are invaluable sources for advice from the more experienced users. There was also a lot of discussion going on about addiction and Vapor Chris actually said from a psychology perspective and Vapor Chris is a student, says addiction is isn't an issue unless it is causing a problem. And of course with E cigs it's not causing a problem. I would agree. Uh, we've also had a lot of discussion about chocolate, but that was because someone threatened to ban that in chat, so that got them occupied for a little while. <laughs> but that that brought up the the subject of flavourings, which they were talking about for a little while as well. Flavourings. Yes. Okay. Let's 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 talk a little bit about flavourings. Are flavourings as popular in France as they appear to be in the UK? I mean. Do you have a vanilla custard over there or a creme patissier? Uh, I don't think so, but we have plenty of flavors. Yes. Okay. So, uh, and and your your take on flavorings is that, that what um, we don't know a great deal, but so far there's been no ill effects. What's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, we we don't know. Uh, again, I mean. All those products are are used in, in other industries. I mean, in food industry or cosmetics or things like this. Uh, so, inhaling this stuff is something new. But uh, again, uh, it's probably uh, very very uh, little harmful compared to, to tobacco smoking, and it's not. It, it is. To me, we need to have more scientific uh, uh, studies on this. But but it, again, the problem we will never be able to get something uh, about long term effects until five, ten, or twenty years. So, uh, what should we do? Uh, meanwhile, I mean, should we stop uh, selling e cigs? That's certainly not my position. Uh, e cigs are are, are really, really much harmless, or, or almost harmless, compared to smoking. We always have to compare with smoking. And we struggled the same way when we were trying to, to bring nicotine replacement therapy, uh, you know, 10 or 20 years ago, because the regulators were very afraid of nicotine. Nicotine is considered as, a, a, you know, a poison. Uh, but at, at the doses a smoker is using or a vapor is using, nicotine is, is pretty much harmless. It's yeah. just it's just a drug of pleasure, and that's probably maybe why it causes problems. Yes, yeah, so I, I, people get pleasure from it. I think you are probably right. Yes, the uh, I don't like it, so nobody else should like it. State of mind does seem to be quite prevalent. 
Even in certain MEPs that we are aware of and who may have been the recipient of a large number of tweets, who can say? I would know nothing at all about that. Um, although I am going to say to everybody that's been active on the Twitter, kudos. I think it's amazing what's been going on. Um, I'm going to go to the adverts right now. And when we come back, I'm going to play in uh, Nicky Sinclair's video. Nicky, in, in case you don't know, Jack, is a, an MEP for the We Demand a Referendum Party in the UK, who recorded a video yesterday, which I'd like everybody to see. When that finishes, we'll be joined by Mr. Andrew John Sutton of Smoke Without Fire fame. And you will see why. We will be back in two minutes. As a member of the European Parliament, I often come across silly, ludicrous EU laws. Mostly I come across proposed EU legislation that seems to be a stranger to common sense. Proposed legislation that makes you wonder who is really pushing for it. An example of this is the EU e-cigarette ban. Users of the electronic cigarettes who have contacted me in their thousands about the EU cigarette e-cigarette ban. The EU's review of the Tobacco Products Directive is aimed at making smoking in all its forms less attractive to young people in order to discourage them from taking it up. The draft EU Tobacco Directive, in its wisdom, seeks to ban electronic cigarettes. This community, also known as vapors, have contacted me because they desperately do not want to see their electronic cigarettes disappear. The electronic cigarette market in the European Union in 2011 was worth 400 to 500 million euros. In the UK, by the end of 2013, almost one million people would have tried e-cigarettes. However, updated EU regulations governing tobacco products would ban the sale of anything with nicotine concentration of more than four milligrams per milliliter, and that is officially authorised as medicinal. Stop smoking aids such as patches fall within existing rules, so would not be unaffected. So would be unaffected. E-cigarettes, though, would be caught out. If the measures were agreed they would need to pass through the long process which new drugs are certified. Processes such as these are extremely expensive and put the commercial viability of e-cigarettes in doubt. If you dig further into this story, you also learn more about the power of lobbying. The nicotine replacement therapy market was worth £117 million uh, turnover in pharmaceuticals in 2011, most given away free to quitters by the NHS. They have a business here to protect. The pharmaceutical companies first got involved in influencing world and European opinion in 1999 with the launch of the World Health Organization. Since then, companies have lobbied in favour of their products, for example, nicotine patches. It is estimated that the pharmaceutical industry spends 40 million euros on lobbying in the EU annually. Let us take a step back, though, because this argument is far simpler than this. 
If we can for a minute forget about the lobbyists or the pros or cons of e-cigarettes, let us think for a moment who should be the ones deciding on whether the UK consumer can buy these products. Should it be our elected politicians in the UK or here in the European Parliament? I opened out this question to my followers on Twitter and the reply that I had time and time again was that laws governing the UK should be made by the UK government, not a bunch of pen pushers and bureaucrats here in the European Union. Other users said, I think the individual should be able to decide. It needs vigilance and common sense. MEPs who are allowed to openly smoke cigarettes inside the Parliament bar certainly do not practice what they preach. If our politicians are supplied with the true facts on e-cigarettes, rather than the propaganda from interested parties, such as pharmaceutical companies, then they can have an informed debate on the subject and make the right choice for the people of their country. This should not even be an EU issue. This should be an issue for our politicians in the UK to debate, rather than decisions on legislation behind being made by the faceless bureaucrats of the European Union. Even worse, we're not even given a say on whether we want to be part of the European Union or not. A union that is in the, ori the origin of 75% of our laws and which we pay £53 million a day to be part of. As an MEP for the We Demand a Referendum Now party, I will continue to fight until the UK has given its long overdue referendum on EU membership. At the moment, we are powerless in, in, with stories such as these. We need to change that. The people of the UK are demanding a referendum and it is about time that the politicians listen to the people. The EU Tobacco Directive and the banning of e-cigarettes is simply another reason why we need a referendum. Thank you. Out. And that was Nikki Sinclair, MEP um, in the Midlands uh, for the uh, We Demand a Referendum Party, an MEP who has actually put her head above the parapet and said, no, it's not going to happen if I've got anything to do with it. And I would exhort all other MPs to do exactly the same. But I'm also joined now by a third caller in her, who unfortunately I don't have room to shove a monitor up. But we have... Um, in a little box to my left hand side, he's down here, we have Mr Andrew John Sutton of that ilk and you've got some rather exciting news haven't you Andy? Yes, yes, for anybody that's been keeping up with the Smoke Without Fire campaign um, you'll know that I, I've submitted the Kickstarter uh, request to be listed on their website which is for anybody that doesn't know a, a crowdfunding portal for projects of a creative nature and today when I left work I got the email I was waiting for and they've accepted it. So we have got a potential to reach a global audience worldwide um, and w with, with the help of the community we can, we can get some money behind this and, and, and shout very loudly with, with the voice that we all know we have. Indeed, which is hyper exciting and I think you might even be able to cull some footage from this programme. I'm, I'm hoping so, yes. Because what I've been hearing coming from Jacques is... Yes, yes, Jacques, some very interesting stuff and I think we need to talk again. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry Andy, I forgot to put you on screen. Yes, I think you are very, very right. Um, I should say that about, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes before we actually started to come on air, Andy sent me a little teaser. Shall I play it? Why not? Now, I've got to tell you, it came in so soon before the programme that I've not had time to do the usual jiggery and pokery and, and fiddly about you with you that it needs in order to play absolutely spot on. I have played it and it's smooth as a smooth thing. It might appear a little bit jerky. My apologies for that. I just didn't have time to sort it out to suit the system that I use. Uh, it's not Andy's fault. It's nobody's fault. It's just the way it is. Um, I'm not going to play you the whole thing. I'm just going to play you one minute and seven seconds of what is, I think, a masterpiece. Watch this. Episodes. The second that I came in from the garden, I gathered up all of my smoking stuff and I threw it in the bin. Initially, it was a novelty to me. It was more out of curiosity. Uh, I had no intention of quitting smoking whatsoever. I just, I wanted to give an e-cig a try, see what all the fuss was about. 18 months ago, I gave up smoking tobacco products for electronic cigarettes. It turns out I liked it a lot. I uh, stopped smoking almost immediately. Not intentionally, it was just a happy accident, a byproduct of using an electronic cigarette. I discovered them 
Christmas 2009 because I didn't want to smoke around my kids and I didn't want to smoke around my mum. And over a few weeks, I discovered, surprisingly, that I preferred vaping to smoking a real cigarette. I never used tobacco flavours. I, I avoided those intentionally. I recently moved to flavours because suddenly tobacco flavours just don't do it for me at all. I'm currently using 36 milligram liquids, um, peppermint. I don't worry about secondary smoke or anything like that. And uh, it's, it's something I enjoy. It's all because of these wonderful devices and, you know, and I'm really enjoying it. I use some other... Yes. And if you want to see more, if you want to see the rest, and I've watched the whole thing, what do they need to do, Andy? You need to tune in to my show on Saturday, 9pm, VaporTrails.tv, and uh, I'll show the whole thing. And there's something exciting we might be doing with that video. Can you guess what it is yet? Oh, I wonder. I just wonder. I just wonder. Jacques, do you think any French MEPs would appreciate seeing that video and being reminded that it exists many, many times. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> you, wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't by chance have a list of their Twitter names and handles, would you? Uh, I, I have them somewhere. <laughs> well, if they happen to find their way into my mailbox and then they happen to find their way into Andy's from there, that'll just be a happy yeah. accident, won't it? <laughs> Yeah. Can I can I just interject here, Dave? That um, that that video is the result of everybody's hard work on YouTube, submitting their videos to the the SWAF YouTube page. I've edited them all together. I just want to say as well, if you it, on Saturday, if you watch the show and you watch the video and you're not in it, it doesn't mean you're not going to make the final cut. There are different versions of this video that's going to get repackaged, and if the Swamp SWAF campaign does as well as we hope it will do. The sky's the limit, really. Indeed, I would, I would echo that. I, I, I'm going to take my hat off to everybody that's already done a video and have submitted it to the SWAF campaign. And I would exhort you all, no matter what device you've got to record it on, record something. Even if it's just 45 seconds, a swift pressy of your story. You don't need to get dressed up. You don't need amazing lighting. You don't need a two and a half thousand pound video camera you don't need a voice that's cut glass and gorgeous you just need to have a heart and speak from it give us a couple of minutes let andy have it and and, he, and make you look like loretta lynn that's gone far too far back sav any comments from chat at the minute um you've answered them again there was a couple of people saying is it too late to send in videos which it's never too just... late never too late it's gonna keep going keep going need thousands and the question directed at Dave Dawn, can you please inform people what is Twitter jail that you were talking of? <laughs> um, I've heard this before. Right, Twitter jail. Okay, just so everybody knows, um, and for those of you that have never been there, Twitter has limits on how many tweets you can send, and a tweet is either a tweet or a retweet. I'm sorry, Jacques, this is going to start sounding really daft. Um, the bottom line on it is, is if you submit more than 250 tweets or retweets in a 30 minute period or what they call semi hourly, in other words, in 30 minutes, then your tweeting privileges get removed. Your retweeting privileges get removed. And I think the only thing you can do is direct message. And I'm not even sure where that works. So you end up in what we've referred to as Twitter jail. Now, there are certain rules about Twitter jail. Uh, if you're a member of the Twitter jail club, first thing, you always talk about Twitter jail. Second thing, never bend over to pick up the soap. You just don't know who's in there with you. Um, but I've, I've been there about five times now, and we think Mark Jones is going for the record for the most number of Twitter jailings. How many has he had now, sir? Oh, I lost count at four, so I don't know. But there seems to be quite a few people currently in chat that are also in Twitter jail at the moment. Oh dear. My <laughs> congratulations to you all. Andy, that must make you very happy. Your Twitter it's, bombs are getting people jailed. I, I, I'm, I, I'm a fellow jailbird as well. So um, welcome to the club. Uh, I will say, though, you can have multiple Twitter accounts. <clears throat> <laughs> 
by their terms of service of course you can't but your email addresses can let's just you know we've got to be right about that in let's case. be right about that yes yeah. in case just in case they're watching uh, anything more from chat Sav? uh no they're still <coughs> talking about twitter jail in here really yes they're all you get to experience this twitter jail well i would suggest that there really is only one way to go about experiencing twitter jail but you might like to do it in company and i think that's uh, eminently possible that you could do it in company on saturday night have you anything planned mr sutton yes the, yes the, the the well i won't go into too much detail now but um it has something to do with that video it's a six minute video uh it tells the story of many people's discovery of electronic cigarettes and what it means to them and um i i, I wish we had the po capability to i don't know send it to politicians and maybe media organizations I, I don't know how we're going to be able to do that though oh let me see let me see let me see um jack you're on twitter aren't you yes i am yes sav you're on twitter aren't you yes i am andy are you on twitter i i have about 16 email addresses really well if we're all on twitter why don't we use twitter to announce to all of these people that need to know what they need to know that they need to know it. Could that, that'll never that'll never work. It'll never catch on, will it? Nah. <laughs> we'd never get it. We'd never get it trending. We we we. Uh, and I've got to say, I mean, I I did a, I've done a count, and mm. uh, so far Saturday nights has done over ten thousand. Yeah, I'm 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 over the moon with how it's gone, um, and now is the time to escalate what we're actually sending because i mean you know the, the 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 video that you just played in from the mep is, is 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 proof i mean you know we came up with that hashtag in a skype chat and now it's on her video and it's it's you know speaks for itself absolutely it does it certainly does and we're rapidly running towards the end of the show jacques is there anything that you would like to say to any vapor anywhere in the world that would g them up towards fighting this ban that the EU is likely to be coming up with. Yeah, and I just wanted to to to, to say something about what you just uh, presented here. I mean, the, all those witnesses uh, of people who were smokers and and incidentally stopped smoking without really wanting it, and I see that every day on the forum, and that's that's. I think that's the strength of of e yes. uh, and and that's why I think uh, we should let people know that it works this way because that's the the best thing that we the, I mean that's the best argument we have uh, to to support e is that it helps people stop smoking. Uh, I would I would I would say you're absolutely right, and I would agree with every last word sav as usual we always give the last word to chat because our viewers are the most important people as far as we are concerned what are they saying what are we going out with what we're going out with tonight is a comment that came from big craig and he said the thing is i love vaping i love mixing i love everything i've never said to myself i loved smoking cigarettes do you know that's so so right um, Does yeah. Big Craig have a video camera? That's the question. Say it again. <laughs> Does Big Craig have a video camera? Because it's exactly that sentiment that I, I, you know, we just need over and over again, and and we will, you know, they've got to listen. Absolutely right. And I'm going to go out on the here's our credits because they're pretty much the same as every other credits that I do. It's the same people involved. I want to say. A great big thank you to Jacques Le Uzek for giving up an hour and a quarter of his time to come and join us tonight. You have no idea, Jacques, how grateful I am. You've got no idea how much information you've put across. I am so grateful you would not believe. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd also like to say thank you to Andy Sutton for coming in and sharing that little teaser, that little trailer, that little bit of the upcoming thing. I'm so excited now. I can barely contain myself. I've done a little wee. 
And it's it's uh, to to Sav for doing the job that only Sav can do the way Sav does it. The bubblicious babiness beautiness of the whole thing. It's amazing. I've had an absolutely cracking tonight, but the biggest thanks go to you, the viewer, for tuning in. It's been great to have you along with us, and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow night on the Here's Hour, the credits for which I'm about to play out now. So until then, be safe, be lucky, be nice to one each other. Uh, to each other. Yeah, yeah, be nice to one uh, another. That was what I meant. It's it's the it's the juice is getting to me. And uh, I'll see you in Twitter jail. Until then, from all of us here, cheery bye. ta -da now.